Unit 4.3, Statically Indeterminate Torsionally Loaded Structures. In this unit, we've been focused on the course outcome, demonstrate the ability to calculate stress and deflection of torsionally loaded structures. In this lesson, we are going to solve for support reactions and internal torques and stresses in statically indeterminate torsionally loaded members. We will see that the methods that we use for statically indeterminate torsionally loaded members are very similar to the methods we use for solving for support reactions in statically indeterminate axially loaded members. Here's a statically indeterminate torsionally loaded member. There are walls at A and C to which the member is fixed and a single torque applied at B. If we draw a free body diagram and sum the torques equal to zero, we get the following equation. Using the right hand rule as shown, the 400 newton meter torque will be positive. The reactions at wall A and at C will be negative. All that sums to zero. We see there are two unknown reactions, and we have no more equations of static equilibrium. Therefore, it is statically indeterminate. So we have two methods to solve this problem. The first is the force method. You recall we used the force method for solving for statically indeterminate structures which were axially loaded. The method will be very similar here. With the force method we use the principle of superposition to take a problem that we cannot solve with statics alone and divide it into two or more simpler problems. In the middle image I have removed the support at C, which then allows the, end, the free end at C to rotate under this applied load of 400 newton meters. We will expect to see an angle of twist. We can call it phi sub T, T for the torsional load that's being applied. The bottom image represents what the wall is going to do to the shaft. The wall will not allow this angle of twist to occur. The wall exerts a reaction force, we will call it T sub C, which will cause an angle of twist to occur in the opposite direction to that above. We will call it phi sub C. Now we can write a compatibility equation, which is the angle of twist phi sub T is equal to the angle of twist phi sub C. Now we can expand these equations using TL over JG. For the first term, which corresponds to this diagram here, the internal torque is only present from the wall at A to the external torque at B, and its magnitude is 400 newton meters. From B to C, C being the free end in this diagram, there is no additional external torques applied, so there are no internal torques. They are equal to zero from B to C. So rewrite our internal torque, T, is 400 newton meters. The length is 0 0.3 meters. That is the length from A to B, which is feeling the internal torque of 400 newton meters. And J and G will leave in this form. The second term in our equation, phi sub C, corresponds to this image here at the bottom. If we were to draw the internal torque diagram, it would look something like this. The internal torque is equal to T sub C and it's constant from the end at C all the way to A. In our equation, we will substitute T sub C in for T. The length is the length of the shaft that is feeling that internal torque, which is the whole shaft from the wall at A to the torque at the end at C. So the length is 0 0.5 meters over JG. Now we can solve for T sub C and we get T sub C is equal to 240 Newton meters. We can take that value that we solve for T sub C, plug it into our equation of static equilibrium, and solve for our remaining unknown T sub A, which is equal to 160 Newton meters. We can now draw a free body diagram with the external torque and reactions applied, and this is what the internal torque diagram will look like. There is another method that we previously called the balance deflection method. In this method, we start with the same problem. We have our statically indeterminate member supported at A and C. Drawing a free body diagram, we can plot what the internal torque will look like. We know there's a reaction at A and a reaction at C. 
at B there is a 400 newton meter torque applied. Our diagram will look something like this. We don't know the magnitudes of T sub A and T sub C yet, but we know the difference between them is 400 newton meters. From this we can write our compatibility equation, which will be that the angle of twist from A to B is equal to the angle of twist from C to B, or another way to say that the angle of twist from A to B plus the angle of twist from B to C will equal zero. Now we can expand our equation. In the first term, which corresponds to the angle of twist from A to B, the internal torque we see on the diagram is T sub A, and the length over which it's applied is 0.3 meters. That is over J and G. In the second term, the internal torque is T sub C. The length over which it's applied is 0.2 meters. Notice I'm not worrying about the sign because in our compatibility equation we have just set the magnitudes of the angles of twist equal to each other. We see from the diagram that they'll be in opposite directions. Now we can solve for T sub A and that is equal to two-thirds T sub C. Using our equation of static equilibrium we can substitute in the value for T A and solve for T C is equal to 240 newton meters. Plugging this value into this equation, we get Ta is equal to 160 newton meters. They are the same answers we got when we used the force method. And we're done.